What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Week 10 here in the SFL, and we are 6-3 and three on the season, and we are taking on an Albuquerque Armadillos team today that has two subscribers on it. Shout out to my man linebacker Arturo Esquivel, at Arturo Esquivel 2871 in the comments, and also tight end Bjorn Jeffrey. Shout out at Ethan Fontenot 2013. We will be taking on you guys today, and you guys are 4-4, four and four, so you're looking to get over that 500 mark on the season we will go over the albuquerque armadillos roster here in a second but first we have a brand new subscriber joining the sfl today guys we are up to 27 subscribers now i had to actually go through and count because i lost track and sure enough we are at 27 subscribers and if you don't know what's going on here and if you or if you would like to join the sfl yourself go back and watch episode one so you could see kind of what's going on basically we're uh, allowing subscribers to join the league as creative players but we have a brand new subscriber joining here that would be mr darian wolcott the new running back on the chicago elks here in the nfc east shout out at row colors fusion in the comments darian here looks a very good 81 overall star dev of course i make all the subscribers star dev to start six foot 210 out of clemson and take a look at that 99 juke move and that 99 spin move oh, shit. Oh, shit. we play the chicago elks here in two weeks so we are going to get to see darian here on full display also looks pretty well rounded aside from that but man oh man prepare to have our ankles broken in two weeks because darian here has the elusive ability of some of the best halfbacks in the sfl gonna go through the standings here quickly so make sure to look out for your team so you can see how you're doing so far on the season and then probably next episode i will go through all the stats of our subscriber players so we got the san antonio voyagers here best team in the sfl no subscribers on that team so if you want to join a team that's already uh playoff bound maybe the san antonio voyagers would be the team for you then we got us here toronto thunderbirds and then the uh, other seven win ball clubs the virginia beach blues and the oklahoma city antlers taking a look at these six win ball clubs in the sfl we got the portland steamers oakland wizards and the rio de janeiro redwoods the five win ball clubs we got the paris black knights brothers subscribers on that team san diego aviators and the vancouver huskies to go along with the salt lake city bisons couple new subscribers on that team the columbus caps chicago elks who we just talked about uh louisville desperados honolulu dragons so lots of five win ball clubs and then taking a look at the 500 teams here albuquerque armadillos of course who we played today we got the montreal monarchs anchorage snowhawks san juan tigers who we just played a couple episodes ago austin lumberjacks who we play next week and they are also in our division so today very important game for us to stay atop that afc east and then these sub 500 ball clubs we got the melbourne dreadnoughts we got the orlando orbits memphis river hogs sacramento sentinels uh, st louis bulls dublin shamrocks who are on a nice win streak even though their record's still not very good they were uh winless up until a couple weeks ago Got the Omaha Pioneers at three and six. And then looking at our two win ball clubs, we got the Canton Condors, who we just played last week. Tokyo Golden Eagles, Brooklyn Nighthawks, who are also in our division. London Mounties, and then the worst team in the SFL, Houston Oilers. Also, no subscribers on that team either. So maybe someone should come in, join that team, and elevate them and hopefully improve their record. Taking a look at the four and four Armadillos here. They got Geno Smith at their quarterback, 10-year vet, not going to write him off, of course. Don't want to do that. They got Nick Chubb, but he's hurt, so that sucks for the Armadillos. A.J. Dillon and Ty Chandler are going to be the feature backs. No fullback? Okay. Works for me. And then A.J. Brown, very good receiver, of course, to go along with Juju Smith-Schuster, Devontae Parker, Jawan Jennings, Nikhil Harry back there as well. And then subscriber tight end here, Bjorn Jeffrey, rookie out of Colorado. Let's take a look and see what Bjorn is doing on the season here. He's got... Season stats, uh, we'll look at career stats, I guess. He's got 16 catches, 143 yards, and two touchdowns. Nothing crazy, but he could have a breakout game here against us today. Offensive line, Laramie Tunsil, one of the best left tackles in the game. Cordell Volson, not very good in the left guard position. Brian Allen is the center. 
Um, so, Sa, okay, why tell her? Good right guard. So, they got somebody good on both sides. That's good to see for them. Abraham Lucas as well. And then taking a look at the defense, they got Kalijah Kansi on the left side. And Charles Omenehu not going to be on the right side because he's hurt. So, Justin Zimmer will be filling that spot. Defensive tackle, they got Dalvin Tomlinson and Jonathan Hankins. Christian Harris is the left linebacker, but we don't care about him. Sorry, Christian. We care more about Arturo Esquivel. Let's see what uh, Arturo is doing on the season. I know I've seen some uh, some pretty good plays on the good old stat sheet from Esquivel. He's got a TFL. He's got a pass deflection. Thought he had some set. Oh, yeah, three sacks. Okay, there we go. Three sacks and a TFL to go along with 29 tackles. So will Mr. Esquivel be a game record today? Not sure. Shaq Thompson not here, so Cody Barton and Micah McFadden are the middle linebackers. Adafe Owe is the right out. Corners, pretty good. Legereus Snee, Asante Samuel, Casey Hayward. So may get some picks on us today with Jordan Love. Malik Hooker, good free safety as well. Yeah, okay. Their entire secondary is stacked. Cam Curl here as well. And then kickers, they don't have one, apparently. Okay. They got Matt Ariza, so I guess he will be manning the kicking duty and the punting duty here today. I've only lost one game against subscribers so far this season, so will Arturo Esquivel and Bjorn Jeffrey tarnish that stat line of mine? I don't know. Should be a good one. They are 85 overall team, and 4-4, four and four, nothing to trifle with, and we are also on Monday Night Prime Time. Let me get a little screenshot of that. But if you guys are fired up for some more SFL content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Remember, at 1,000 subscribers, I will do an NFL jersey giveaway. Over 800 now, so very, very close. Please help me get there, guys. This is my passion, making content for you. But without further ado, let's get on down to Thunderbirds Field here and get ready for the game. And we are going to be kicking the ball off first to the Armadillos. So Justin Tucker, the uh, veteran out of Texas, Gonna boot this thing back. And what will the Armadillos have in store for us? We're playing pretty good here. Thunderbirds, we have uh, pretty much, I, mean, I don't wanna say we've dominated teams. We definitely dominated the Canton Condors last week. That much is for sure. Let's get a look at Geno Smith. I mean, workmanlike, I guess, 12 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, and close to 2,000 yards. But we know Geno's been doing this for a long time. And yet, like he, like he said, to quote him, you can never write him off. So here we go now. Uh, Gino coming out single back to start this thing out. And it's going to be a play action boot. And there is a catch and a completion by Bjorn Jeffrey, the rookie out of Colorado and subscriber on this channel. Good catch, but only for a gain of one. Now Gino going into shotgun here. I think we're going to not blitz with Poyer. I wanted to at first, but I need him to play some coverage and help on the outside. And Gino just going to throw this thing out of bounds. It was in the vicinity of Devontae Parker. So no intentional grounding, but a big third down here. And can we get the Armadillos off of the field so we can get this Thunderbirds offense and showcase those guys so we're sending heat at gino gino flustered he they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine he's going for it all and it's a pick oh marcus peters marcus peters had it and dropped it that was intended for aj brown and marcus peters has a pretty good handful of interceptions and i just realized we uh toronto thunderbirds we are formerly the buffalo bills and they got sean mcdermott as their coach so of course, we got uh, Coach Damon Sanders. Oh, nice move from Peterson. Couldn't get to the outside. But Sean McDermott may be looking for a little revenge against the team that, I guess, let him go to bring in Coach Damon Sanders. And there is Jordan Love playing very, very good on the season. 16 touchdowns to go along with seven interceptions. And remember, we also have our new subscriber running back, Tubby McDouble out of Oregon State. He played great in his SFL debut. Another subscriber on this channel. So let's see if he can maybe pick up where he left off. Tubby fighting forward, getting dragged down there by Adafe Owe. But a gain of seven to start, I will take it. Test Kareem Hunt on the outside, who is just back from injury. Nice to see Kareem. Needed some lead blockers there. It looked like they, uh, they kind of had interest in doing some blocking, the, the guard and the tackle there, but... Didn't end up uh, really being too much. Only a pickup of one. So this is a big one here, guys. Kind of wish I had Kareem on a route. 
But I guess the fact that he's blocking, um, not the worst thing in the world underneath to Olave. Heck of a catch there. Chris Olave coming off probably his best game. Last week, able to move the chains for a first down. So second and eight here, Olave on the streak may be an option. No, I don't really like it. And I was torn between going to Logan Thomas and Darren Waller there. I think I pressed both buttons as a matter of fact. Um, yeah, you don't want to do that. And here on third and eight, kind of like uh, the running back Kareem Hunt coming out of the backfield. Hunt, of course, is a very good route runner, so maybe... He can get open or possibly ox mall, and we're going to be sacked. Dafe Owe is a problem here to start, man. He is definitely a problem. Going to have to uh, always keep eyes on him, I suppose. And that, you know, we were never in field goal range to start. So a couple of punts to kick this thing off here from both teams. Not a lot of action to start, but hopefully our defense can continue playing well like they did on that last drive. Not the best punt there from A.J. Cole, and it's going to be a decent return up to the 25. I feel like pressure worked pretty well on Geno last drive, so we're going to continue to dial that up. He was kind of looking like he was a little paranoid. It's Bjorn! It's Bjorn Jeffrey! Okay. Nice to see a subscriber player get a big gain, but uh, as the coach of the Thunderbirds, Ooh. I actually don't like to see that. And this is a much better drive here for the Dillos, and uh, don't like the fact that A.J. Brown is right there, so I'm going to actually drop Leonard Floyd out. It's a catch from Devontae Parker, but Winfield was right there in the vicinity to ensure that the first down did not get picked up. Now, here on third and two, uh, I'm going to come out zone, but going to audible into pressure, and probably they got a fullback in here as well, so probably going to be a run to Dylan. It is, and we're right there. Dylan very close to the first down, but not going to get it. See if the Armadillos go for this, or if they kick a field goal, they are going to go for it. And they're also coming out gun as well. Not convinced that it won't be a run, though, so we are going to have a little zone blitz here. It's probably be a play fake or something like that now that I'm playing for it. Let's drop back Bobby Wagner. It's uh, A.J. Brown. Nice play there. Geno Smith starting out good. Five for seven for 56. Not liking the way that this drive is starting out here. And A.J. Dillon again going to just kind of flirt with the outside. Nope. Oh, nice cut there by Dillon. We had a chance to stop him. And Dillon powering forward as he tends to do. Quadzilla, as they call him down in Green Bay. Getting uh, into the end zone. Bjorn Jeffrey, A.J. Brown celebrating there with him. And that was a great drive. So we're going to need to definitely do the opposite that we did last drive for us uh, because we're going to need to respond. Now, I am going to audible this to the left, and I need to ID up. Is that Esquivel over there? It might just be. Need to ID up Esquivel as the mic. There we go. Tubby's got lanes. Tubby going. Picking up a nice game. Go ahead and flex on him there. Shout out at Wayne Kelly in the comments. Hope you watched. The last episode, my brother, because that episode was all about you and our other subscriber player, Jay Monstro, our new defensive tackle. So we'll go ahead and continue to feed Tubby the Rock here. He did tell me he was on a strict diet of first downs. Nice cutback lane. Stiff Armin trying to keep uh, going there. Tubby able to pick up six, and he's starting out with 29 yards on the ground. How about screen pass to McDouble here? Let's see if we can set this up. Nice for my man. Give me a couple blocks. Nice pancake. Tubby with the juke. Ooh, and Arturo Esquivel gets injured. No. No, no, no. Got to make sure he uh, comes back into this game. Hopefully, because, you know, as much as I don't want to see him get sacks in TFLs, trust me, <laughs> I don't. I kind of do because this content is all about you guys, the subscribers. So I would love, I mean, it would be a love-hate thing if it happened. And, oh, I shouldn't have. Well, maybe I should have. RPO to Mike Oxmall, another subscriber. Mike Oxmall. Shout out Rams fan in the comments. Picking up nine on the screen pass. Now we are into the red zone here. So we're going to come out single back and going to be a little play action shot. We got somebody open on the outside. It's Logan Thomas. Getting it to within uh, five yards of the goal line. This drive definitely much better than the previous drive. And I think we uh, lean on Tubby here a little bit. We got Kyle Juszczyk, although Chris is getting pressed. Chris Olave, 
Not going to worry about it. We're going to hope that Kyle Juszczyk can lead the way for McDouble. It's pay dirt season. Tubby picking up where he left off, making a, a snow angel, an end zone angel, I guess if you want to call it that. And way to respond for the T-Birds, making this a 7-7 game, knotting things up here before the end of the first. Let's stay in man for a while and uh, also I'll press up here. Miles Garrett, maybe we can get him coming off the edge. Nope, it is. Oh, what a catch from A.J. Brown. You got to be kidding me. It was Moss season. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. We had our cornerback there in great position, but that was all A.J. Brown. Maybe I should have went for the SWAT. I did go for the pick there with D.J. Reed. And yeah, I mean, look at that. High degree of difficulty. D.J. Reed was right there. But A.J. Brown does do that. May have to uh, throw some double teams on him, possibly. Or at least put some extra eyes on whatever side of the field he's on. End of the first here, and Gino and the Dillos are playing really good. 103 passing yards. We're even, you know, between passing and rushing. But they got a nice drive cooking here as they are already flirting with uh, being into the red zone on the 28th. So we just got to kind of, we got to watch out for A.J. Uh, Dillon. And AJ Brown, the AJs. It's been the AJ show, but that's the Brandon Graham show. Getting to Geno Smith on play action, driving him into the turf. Good to call the veteran Graham's name. Third and 17. I mean, you gotta figure that we can for, uh, hold him to a field goal. Let's guess pass and shade inside on this one. Also, watch uh, Ty Chandler's side of the field. He's going for Jeffrey. Bjorn. I love you, brother. Thank you for being subscribed to this channel. But uh, not your biggest fan after you just converted a tough third and 17. Yeah, I mean, how do you let that happen? How do you... That's busted coverage all day, man. Now, Gino coming out of the eyes. So, got to lock in on Dylan. It is going to be a Dylan run. AJ Dylan running good. I was really happy. I mean, look, you guys know, you check my background here, that I'm a huge Packers fan. And uh, with the addition of Josh Jacobs, of course, no more Aaron Jones. But I was really happy that they did retain A.J. Dillon. Very good player, I think. And he's a bruiser. And just all, all in all, I, I'm, I'm a Dillon fan. Not a Dillon fan in this one, though. And look at him push the pile forward, man. It's crazy. Should have been stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Instead, he gets it all the way down to the one. How about this? Geno Smith empty. Really, that's, uh, that's very, very odd. Let's send some pressure. Okay, pressure was there. Jordan Poyer, he's like, yep. Or is that Jordan Poyer? No, it's Antoine Winfield. My bad. I think we go coveted 60 out jacks blitz here. Hopefully it's not a pass. Let's go ahead and actually, yeah, we need Poyer to guard up on AJ Brown, but Miles Garrett's there. And look, Miles Garrett is so strong and so powerful. He injures AJ Dillon on the tackle. Come on, man. So as far as I know, they don't have a fullback. I didn't see one pregame. They're going zero wide receivers again, too. Wow. So as far as I know, it is only Ty Chandler. Like, I don't know. I guess maybe we'll see Bjorn Jeffrey, the tight end, get some carries. I don't know. There's Ty, and oh, my God, he cut. He bounced out to the outside there. Um, now he's doing something questionable with the football. Don't know what the, the armadillos, how they practice celebrations, but they're not very good. But, uh, wow, okay. So with their only running back, uh, presumably on the roster, Ty Chandler, he's able to punch it in and make this a 14-7 ball game. Arturo's got an abdominal tear to be determined, so hopefully he comes back. Also, A.J. Dillon, Torin Labrum don't think that he's coming back, but maybe Esquivel does, and I hope he does. I definitely hope he does. Oh, look at Tubby with a nice juke. He's not really known for those juke moves, more of a, a bruiser, just like Dillon, right? But uh, he showed him off on full display there and with tubby running the way that he is i am perfectly fine let's actually audible this into power need a good uh pull from our left guard here can we get it nice block tubby shut down though only able to pick up one i think we i think we trust the run game though still i think that we do um not necessarily liking these ones that the coach is drawing up for me we'll go single back inside zone and hopefully, let's ID up the uh, left linebacker here as the mic. And hopefully, we can get some good blocks for Tubby. We do, and he should have it just barely. 
by a short and a curly. But that is all McDouble needs. Just a little bit of room there. And he picks up the first down. Olave is getting pressed. He did really good on these situations last week. Let's see what the safety does. Oh, he's he's open. Come on, Love. Throw an accurate ball. Olave hangs on. And he should have six. Asante Samuel could not catch him. Man, oh, man, I've been locked in on these presses lately between this series and the St. Louis Sentinels. My, That's my main franchise series where I go through all the standard franchise stuff there. But I have been locked in on these press situations as of late. And the defenders, they've, you know, they've they've been having their safeties kind of like cheat up to play the run, especially if they're in single high. They weren't in single high that time, but the free safety uh, did, you know, cheat down there. That was Malik Hooker. Second I saw that, it was bomb to Chris Olave. And how about that? This one could turn into a shootout. 14-14, about six minutes to go here until halftime. So they still only got Ty Chandler. So again, I'm not sure. It's great coverage there. Great blanket coverage from uh, Marcus Peters. So not sure what their MO is here. You know, um, I mean, I would assume that like we're probably going to see a, a tight end or something in the backfield if need be. Um, but right now it's only... Only Ty Chandler. So let's see if we can get some pressure through the A-gaps here on Geno. Okay. Great defense there again by Pat Pete. Good thing. I, I definitely, definitely jumped that route. So it's a really good thing that that ball wasn't caught because, <laughs> you know, a lot of times you jump those routes and you miss. It's six the other way. But third and ten here, let's play some good solid zone coverage. Got to watch, of course, A.J. Brown. And fourth and inches. That was completed to Jawan Jennings, but surely the Austin Armadillo's punt here. Got to watch for the fake, though. But I would have been so upset. That would have been the second time that they converted on a third and long. Wouldn't be surprised if they fake it, and it will be a true punt. So, Patrick Peterson, can I get a decent return from you, brother? Nope. Punt returns, kick returns so hard in this game, at least to me. Let's see if we can continue to ride the hot streak of one Chris Olave. So hopefully after halftime, second half, Arturo can come back because, uh, you know, definitely want to showcase. Not sure when we're going to get to play the Armadillos again here in the SFL. So definitely want to showcase this man as much as possible. Tubby on the screen. Decent blocking. And he was, oh, Graham, that was all Graham Glasgow. That was all Graham Glasgow, number 60, our right guard. He pushed the pile forward because Tubby definitely would have been stopped short. And in this situation, I would love to choose some clock down. We get the ball back after halftime, so potential double dip scenario. You know, Tubby McDouble's looking to double dip. He don't have any manners. So a slow, methodical drive, but definitely, of course, wanted to end in points. Olave getting pressed again. We got to send him. We got to send him. I'm coming out play fake. Don't think I have time to audible it. Um, I see the I see Malik Hooker. I see Malik Hooker going away from it. It's Olave again. Come on now. Put some respect on my man's name, please. Put some respect on his name. Malik Hooker, you're just you're gonna have to drop back every single time. Or maybe here's a thought. Asante Samuel, why don't you qu quit pressing him? I mean, for me, go ahead. Press him all you like. But uh Chris Olave is just absolutely cooking. In this game, the only thing, my only bugaboo, if you will, still three and a half to go. So we are going to need to lean on the support of our defense. But this has been an offensive explosion. Sean McDermott can't believe it. He's like, look, Bruh. I should be coaching that team right now. Because, of course, we are formerly the Bills. But no, Sean, you're coaching the Ar uh, Albuquerque Armadillos. So I'm going to need you to give the boys a little pep talk. And maybe talk to your secondary and tell them to quit freaking pressing. Four wide here for Geno Smith. Also got uh, Chandler in the backfield there. Garrett, let's see if he can get instant pressure in the backfield. Oh, we had him. Garrett started it, and it's going to be Michael Pierce that cleans it up. But that was Garrett. Garrett did get initial pressure and forced Geno Smith to roll out into to his left. Want to see Jay Monstro, the new defensive tackle who plays alongside Michael Pierce, subscriber on this channel. He played good also, kind of uh, overshadowed by the performance of Tubby McDouble, but he did play good as well. So I'd like to see him pick up where he left off. It's going to be Garrett again on pressure, and this time, oh, okay, okay, okay. It's uh, Ty Chandler there. 
Nice pickup, making this third and much more manageable, but he's slow to get up as well. Yeah, not sure what the armadillos would do if, if Ty Chandler went down. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if the game would even allow that. Is there like any safeguards in Madden to say like, oh, okay, they're down. Okay, come on, throw it to Brown, throw it to Brown, throw it to Brown. I was hoping he would throw it to Brown because I had, uh, I was kind of lurking there. But nonetheless, Gino throws it away. Our pressure is starting to get turned up here. We are pushing that puppy to maximum capacity. And we got two minutes to engineer a drive, score, and then hopefully come out of the locker room score again and complete the good old double dip scenario pat pete nice move i'll take it yeah look now we see asante samuel like screw that i am playing off if they want to hit olave on some little curl routes or something like that go for it and this could be valda scantling needs you to keep the feet in bounds he does so beautifully and how about Jordan Love? Only one incompletion so far in this game. Got a little mesh spot here out of the shotgun. Again, time is not a factor at all. So I kind of want to run some of this clock off. Okay. Now the pressure was turned up there by Malik Hooker. I mean, look, that's fine, Malik. That's fine. If you want to blitz, come at me like that, that's good. But just remember, brother, that you have been cooked by Olave multiple times. So out of the shotgun here, this could be... A Kareem Hunt route, maybe. Um, I mean, he dove for it. It's two straight incompletions now from Love as well. Coach saying PA crossers out of gun. I do like this, but we got to kind of be careful because we don't want to get sacked and be out of field goal range. That would be highly unfortunate. We're going up to Olave. He caught it. No way. What a catch. Chris Olave, man. If this stands... If this stands now, because it was close. We'll take a look at it here. But Chris Olave was a ghost. I think he did. A little ballet lesson there from Olave on the sideline. That's how you tap the toes. They'll, they'll probably booth review it. No, they're not, actually. It was that clean. But Olave was a ghost. He was a phantom. Danny Phantom, we'll call him, for the first half of the season. In these last couple of games, he has burst onto the scene looking like our true number one wide receiver that he should be. And I don't like the fact that they're going hurry up. There's Jay Monstro. Can he get back there to Smith? The pressure, that one is going to fall out of bounds. Jay Monstro was first there in the backfield to cause the panic from Geno Smith. Geno Smith now got a bunch on the right side, so we'll see what he does. I'm following A.J. Brown, and that's going to be a sack there by Miles Garrett. And look... <laughs> We might get the ball back again, man. These armadillos, they gotta, they have to uh, tighten up on their cover or their uh, blocking from the offensive line. And they're just gonna kind of concede. I mean, yeah, we'll call timeout. Why not? This is the longest half of football ever. I don't know about for you guys. I'm sure I probably would have edited some of this stuff out by now. But for me, it's been a long half of football. Feels like it should be the end of the third and not the end of the second. Not seeing the press now, right? Yeah, maybe now you guys are starting to figure it out. How about Oxmall? Ooh, dangerous pass there. But well, Jerry Sneed almost picked that one off. Okay, with 37 seconds, look, I'm gonna go screen pass, and if something, cr like if we burst off some big yardage or something like that, maybe I'll be aggressive, but main thing is which we actually might. Okay, Kareem Hunt getting out of bounds. Jordan Love might throw for 500 yards in this one. This time Marquise Goodwin's getting pressed over there. So going to watch and uh, see what the strong safety does. I don't like it one bit. So Hunt getting the ball. Can he get out of bounds? He does, thankfully. We don't need much for Justin Tucker. We don't need much. I'd say maybe 10 more yards. He might be able to drill this. So levels concept. Let's see what happens here. I don't really like any of this. Tried for Olave again. That was a dangerous pass. Third and two. Just got to pick up something good enough to get in a field goal range. Um, screen pass again. Let's go slants. Slants might be the move. Again, if I can just get 10 yards, I will be confident in that. So let's see what these linebackers do. No, God. Okay. Did not see uh, the defender there at all. And probably, yeah, punt. Okay. Did not put up points. That should be the end of the half, but still... Up by two touchdowns and looking to score coming out of the locker room. 28-14, and look at those passing yards. For a minute there, it looked like Geno Smith and the Armadillos were going to carve us up. 
But man, oh man, a couple of good defensive stands. And our offense really, really, uh, you know, played, uh, played good to complement them. Get a look at the games around the league here in the SFL. Houston Oilers, they got a win. Assuming that game's over. Yeah, we're Monday primetime. So, yeah, of course. Houston Oilers got a win over the Condors. Condors, we just beat them. They got three subscribers on that team. They just can't seem to put it together. Honolulu Dragons lost to the Rio de Janeiro Redwoods. Got a subscriber punter on the Dragons. Only kicker slash punter in the league. Need some kickers punters to come in here. And how about the Virginia Beach Blues and Yeezy Fuentes? They continue their dominance, moving to 8-1 on the season. Wow. Moment of silence for the injured Arturo Esquivel, who looks like he will not be coming back into this game. Okay, moment of silence over. I'm sorry, Arturo, brother. I'm not going to go back and <laughs> replay this game, though, because it is a good one. And I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure... If you were on the field here, it would not be 1428. I'm sure that you would have some good tackles, sacks, TFLs. So that is definitely unfortunate. We pick up three to start this one out. And I'll tell you what, man, I would love for this to be the Tubby McDouble show. Let's uh, send Olave up the seam. Asante Samuel's got the outside shade going on there. Um, nope, I don't like it. But I threw that the wrong way. But it's not hauled in by MVS. It was almost a great catch. That'll make it third and seven. Tell you what, Armadillos really need this stop here because if we march down the field and score again, that could be all she wrote. No, it could be a pick. Wow. Oh, my God. How did LeJerry Sneed drop that? That could that would have been a pick six, too. Was not a good pass by me. I tried to pass lead down for Oxmoor, but LeJerry Sneed was sitting right there in zone coverage. Don't know how he dropped that one. Not arguing with it because that could have been a game-changing play. Verrett can't get the ball carrier down. That's Ty Chandler too, man. You might not want him returning kicks because he is their only running back on roster right now. Well, after a stinker of a drive by us, this is the Armadillo's chance to get back into this game. So they need to do that. And that's Bjorn Jeffrey. Oh, bobbled it. Would have been a heck of a catch there. But Patrick Peterson was in good coverage. So here we go, guessing pass and shading inside here. Also got some pressure coming off of the left side as well. Maybe Leonard Floyd, if we can seal this edge, we could get to Smith. No, it's AJ Brown. Left uncovered, nice curl route by him. Picking up the first down and that was much needed for Albuquerque. Maybe pressure is our best friend right now. I feel like that's been the main thing that has worked well for us. Let's see if Zach Cunningham could possibly get into the backfield. It's Chandler. It's very clogged up in there. Need to bring in a plumber. No gain results on the play. It will be second and 10 from the 30. Yeah, I'm going pressure again and also going to kind of press up with the line there. There's Chandler met there by Jordan Poyer and Miles Garrett. A couple of superstars. They are in field goal range here as well. So uh, field goal would not be the worst thing in the world. So I am fine with something underneath. Got to watch Bjorn Jeffrey as well over here on this left side. He is going to actually drop back to block, and it's going to be Devontae Parker. Nice play there. Keeping the drive alive for Albuquerque, getting it into the red zone. It's a good drive here for Albuquerque. They got a fullback in here, so not even sure who their fullback is. It's got to be their backup tight end, and it was... Good coverage there by DJ Reed, but he's not been able to get his mitts on the pigskin too much in this game, uh, which he has a lot this season. Now, got to watch the left side here. If those block, if it's a run and those blocks get sealed up, it could be bad news bears for us. So I think usering on Zach Cunningham is the best bet. Chandler trying to make things happen. He does. He's playing good uh, in the absence with the absence of AJ Dillon. And they're going zero wide receivers, which is the score, or I should say the play that Ty Chandler did score on earlier. So I'm going to go 60 out jacks again, but got to make sure we get somebody in the backfield. And that's two times now that Ty Chandler has scored on my coveted 60 out jacks blitz play that I do enjoy calling on the goal line. Usually it works, but not working in this one. And if nothing else, the Armadillos are going to make this score look a little bit more respectable, put some pressure on us. It is now a one-score game. Got to get back to our aerial attack here. That's what really worked well 
in the first half. Olave might actually have it. It's been the Chris Olave show for like the last three weeks, man, and I am here for it. Second and five, we're gonna go Tubby draw here. I kinda like that. And the defenders did drop back. Tubby's gonna be a yard short. Yard short here, we are into Armadillo's territory, so I feel like it's gotta be another running play here. Let's, uh, we'll see if Kareem Hunt can pick this up out of I form ISO. Just need to slip through that A gap there between our center and our right guard, and we should have this Kareem the Dream. Gonna get it, but at the expense of a Logan Thomas injury. So that's not good. Lots of injuries in this one. And to some key guys as well. Ah, I wish they were pressing Olave, but I guess Asante Samuels learned his lesson. Gotta also try to get Darren Waller involved too. He's been kind of quiet as of late, but there's Ricky Seals-Jones, the new backup tight end now with Logan Thomas being out. He picks up a good play, getting this ball all the way down to the 13. It's going to be the Tubby McDouble show, um, unless, you know, unless they don't allow it to be. And I don't really like... I guess we're going to audible this to the left side here. And ID up Christian Harris, I believe, would be that player. Let's see if we can get some blocks. Oh, come on, man. Kyle Juszczyk. I needed you to hold a block there on Cody Barton. And you just had no interest in doing so. I like single back here with a play action boot. Let's see if we can get Olave. That would be, what, his fourth touchdown? I uh, tried to throw it away there. I tried, well, I tried to actually pass it, but it didn't matter because I waited too long. I was a little bit too indecisive on that one. But I'll tell you what, though. I'm okay with a field goal here if that's what it ends up being. Of course, I would like to score, obviously, but not going to force anything. And maybe we have somebody that's Mike Oxmall into the corner. Found him beautifully, beautifully, beautifully. Mike Oxmall, subscriber player out of Miami. Going to make this uh, two-score game again. And we really needed that because the first drive out of the locker room was a big old fat stinker. And that gave us a nice, nice cushion to work with. Two-score game, I mean, you got to, if you're the Armadillos, you almost got to be watching that clock. I guess not really with a whole quarter left to go. But the way that we've been playing, and there's Patrick Peterson. Dare I say... Game ceiling interception, maybe? I mean, if we score here, it's a three-score game. And that one was not an easy pick either. That was thrown into a bunch of traffic, bunch of riffraff there. Geno Smith, I uh, guess he was looking for Devontae Parker, but kind of overshot him. And a heck of a play from Patrick Peterson. He's been doing that for a very long time at a very high level. So he is no stranger to big, big plays like that. So Tubby at 69 yards. Very nice to see, by the way. And what do we do here? Um, not going to go probably for the shot play because, again, don't need to play hero ball right now. We just need to really take some of this clock off and uh, hopefully cap this thing off with some points. And if we do that, it will probably be game. So let's go to Seals Jones, and he fights forward and actually gets the first down. Jordan Love, 328 through the air and four touchdowns three of which are to Chris Olave. Dominating, dominating game by the T-Birds, and it looked like looked like the Armadillos were going to be dominant to start. But really, like, they started out good. They had a couple good drives. They, they've had some other good drives as well. But really, ever since, like, the late first quarter, beginning of second quarter, I want to say, it's kind of been a struggle for them, you know? And part of that is our pass rush. Our pass rush has played great in this one. Tubby looking for blocks, falling forward, picking up seven. He's now at 76 yards and a TD. Try Kareem Hunt on the outside. Give me some good blocks. Not going to happen. Kareem trying to do it all himself, but was not able to shift through the riffraff. Cody Barton and Christian Harris were there to meet me. And here on third and three, I'm thinking, do we go shot or just something safe? Something safe. Because again, like we're in a position now where any points we score, even a field goal, Makes it very, very difficult for the Armadillos to really come back. Let's put McDouble on the out route and just see who gets open. I think it is Tubby. Tubby, can you fall forward? He's going to be stonewalled there at the nine-yard line. And I mean here, not going to get aggressive. Field goal will be fine with me. Kick is up and good. Little chippy from Justin Tucker. No worries there. He's going to drill that 12 times out of 10. 
Armadillos, man, they if they don't score on this drive, like literally this drive and a touchdown, not a field goal, if they don't score on this drive, let's go ahead and get the warm milk, the bedtime story, and the nightcap because this thing is over. See what Gino and the boys do here. I was going to say there's no time to be fooling around with runners, run plays, or something like that. Bjorn Jeffrey just dropped it. So Bjorn, he's he had a great first half making some huge clutch catches, but been pretty quiet since that time. Uh, he's over there on the right side, right in front of Miles Garrett. Um, that's Devontae Parker, but a nice open field tackle there by Jordan Poyer. Big third down upcoming here for the Armadillos. They, I mean, pff, might as well say it's four down territory, you know? I realize they're on the 29, but concern it. What are you going to do? Like, you can't punt it back to us, right? That would, that would, be, that would be foolish. That would be tomfoolery. And Bobby Wagner, I got him leaking out to the side, to the outside there, and that's a nice clutch first down catch by Devontae Parker. They really needed that. I'm telling you, they're just taking their good old sweet time to get downfield here. And Father Time is not their friend right now. Father Time, oh, that could have, could have, should have, would have been a pick. Not even sure who that was, but I usered on him and uh, did not press the triangle button. Can't do that, kids. Gino, what's he going to do? He's looking wow. for A.J. Brown. It's another Moss second of the game. Where was this in the second and third quarter, though? That's what I'm saying. It's, you know, it's a good drive here, but, you know, it might be a case of too little too late. And now with them bringing in a fullback, surely, surely they're not going to run this, right? I mean, if they do, that's just stupid because, yeah, okay, play fake, I was going to say. Got to watch Bjorn Jeffrey on the outside. Gino, he's thinking about running it. I mean, it's a decent play, but taking too much time off this clock, man. Defenders in the A-gap. Gino coming out empty here. We're sending some pressure his way, and that's going to be a pick from Marcus Peters. That's game. Game, set, match. Thunderbirds looked great in this one. Started off sluggish, but there is no way now that uh, the Armadillos even have a snowball's chance in Hades and coming back in this one. 38-21 will be your final. We were able to just run the ball and milk the clock down. Don't think it would have mattered anyways, but uh, Sean McDermott can't believe it. His former team just absolutely owned, and it was tight there. It's close there for a while, you know, but I feel like uh, that second drive coming out of halftime is when we really started to open things up here. So nice win from the Thunderbirds, and let's check on the stats Again, sorry to Arturo Esquivel, brother. Sorry you got injured, but Jordan Love continues to dominate. Should have had one pick, but it was dropped by Sneed. And Geno Smith, two picks and no touchdowns, so maybe we will have to write him off. Huh? Tubby McDouble continues to play well. 94 yards and a touchdown. Ch uh, Ty Ch Chandler, blah, 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 can't talk. Ty Chandler pl played pretty good here, and then Kareem Hunt did what he had to do. And receiving here, we'll check on uh, Chris Olave. Wow, what a game. A.J. Brown played good. Bjorn Jeffrey, 3 for 48, but a couple of those catches were very, very clutch, especially that third and 17. Miles Garrett came to play today, so that was really good to see. Three TFLs and a big sack. Also, Brandon Graham had one. Michael Pierce had one. And then Jonathan Hankins, who's now hurt. And Adafi Owe had half sack as well. And then Marcus Peters and Patrick Peterson, the veteran, had an interception. But let's go ahead and check on the stats here in Week 10 around the SFL. Virginia Beach Blues just continue to dominate. They are now 8-1 on the season. And wow, Josh Allen, first time I've seen him go like over 200. He had a big one, 324 and 5 touchdowns. But let's see if Yeezy Fuentes was the recipient. Oh my God. Four receptions, 77 yards, and three out of Josh Allen's five touchdowns. Yeezy, I hope you're watching this. And if you are, comment down below what you think of your performance in Week 10. It was a good one. Brooklyn Nighthawks lost to the St. Louis Bulls. They're on a little bit of a skid here, but let's check on the stats of Derek Daragosa. He tore us up when we played him, but not so much in this game. 207 yards and interception. And unfortunately, no touchdowns as his boys take the L against the Bulls. Condor is also another one of those teams. They just can't seem to put together any type of winning streak. Uh, we'll check on Braden Keys. Now, 
Braden played great against us, and he continues to assert his dominance. So potential pro bowler here, even though his team's not playing great, he had set, uh, six receptions, 88 yards, and two touchdowns. So nice job there, Braden. And also checking on the defense of our two safeties that we have on this team. Mike Collins had a TFL. That was good. And also uh, eight tackles. And then Eli Sokowitz also had a TFL and six tackles. But unfortunately, even though we had some good defensive performances, was not enough to propel the Condors to a victory. Orlando Orbitz, couple subscribers on that team. They dropped to the Huskies, who I believe have Patrick Mahomes. Yes, okay, so going to be hard to, uh, to beat them. Let's check on the stats of running back Johnny Waters. I mean, he had a touchdown, which is nice, but... 33 yards, only averaged 2.2 yards per carry, and only one broken tackle. With that 240-pound frame, he's got to gotta be getting some more TFLs. And then we got our corner flash, Parker. He had seven tackles, so was all over the field. But unfortunately, no big plays like sacks, interceptions, or TFLs. OKC okay, Antlers, another one of those teams. I believe they're a two-win team. They get the win. Justin Herbert played great. Three touchdowns, but let's check on the stats of our cornerback, See Ben, who plays for the Antlers, see what he was up to in this game. He had a pick and a deflected pass. So there you go. And four tackles. So shout out at Curry Ben in the comments. Play great in this one and propelled your team to a big W. Black Knights lose a close one to the Monarchs. And we got to check on the stats of our subscriber brother duo. Jaden Hayes played good. No interceptions, three touchdowns and 311 yards. Joe Burrow played good too, so it seems like this one might have just been a shootout, and his brother, Caleb Hayes, also played well too, six catches for 75 yards, but unfortunately, they lost a very tight one against the Monarchs. San Juan Tigers though, good to see them back in the win column. We got three subscribers on this team, and it looks like uh, Tua and Jimmy Garoppolo got some snaps as well, very interesting. So let's check on the receiving stats first. We got a couple. We have our uh, wide receiver, Nick Stoyer, out of Ohio State. Two catches for 21 yards. And then also our tight end, St. James, had one catch for four yards. But at least we're seeing his name on the stat sheet here. And then also getting a look at, or I'm sorry, there's four subscribers on the Tigers. We have King Love here, who just got added. Had a big interception and five tackles. And then also we should have Dior Love down here who had one tackle, but also a pass deflection. So San Juan Tigers with four subscribers on that team. Good to see them getting back in the win column. Honolulu Dragons take the L here against the Rio de Janeiro Redwoods. Justin Fields, 322 and four touchdowns. Yeah, in what world? But don't worry about that. We are just looking for the punting stats of one Jack Mavros. Had to punt the ball six times which uh, is never good, you know, especially that's could have been why they had the loss. But along of 61 and two touchbacks, net average of 44.3, pretty decent day kicking for Mr. Mavros. I'll tell you what, man, these Shamrocks, they just keep finding ways to win. They're up to uh, to four wins now. So checking on Jesse Buzo Jr., the uh, subscriber quarterback, I mean, didn't play great. Uh, one pick and one touchdown, same for Hertz, but apparently did just what enough, just what he needed to do. As far as his receivers that he got involved, mainly Debo Samuel, but also Gabe Davis. Those were his two big targets. But best stat in the world is adding one to the win column. Lumberjacks and Wizards. Thriller. Wow. 14 to 6. Definitely make sure you brought your popcorn for that one. That was a shootout in every sense of the word. Dak Prescott, I always see him with low yardage. I wish on my St. Louis Sentinels franchise that was the case. But Michael Yakin, 219, a touchdown and a pick. And we'll see if he got my man James Briner, the tight end involved. Take a look at his stats. He had a touchdown. There we go. So only touchdown from Yakin did go to James Briner. Two for 27. And we play them next week. So that is going to be a big, big game indeed. Oh, and almost forgot James Briner played his brother today. Michael Briner of the Oakland Wizards. And Michael Briner, of course, the rookie out of North Carolina, four tackles, but no big plays like sacks or TFLs, which you would have loved to see. And uh, with a game that close, maybe that could have been the difference. I don't know. But uh, anyways, guys, that was a thrilling, thrilling episode in week 10. Week 11 is a big one because we take on the Austin Lumberjacks who have two subscribers that we just showed and if we lose that game and they win, they will be very, very close to catching us in the division. So got to make sure we are locked in and laser focused for that one. But that 
that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.